Hi there everyone, Totally Dubbed here, and today I'm giving you an overview and guide on how to set up your whole Pudge uh, HD PVR2. So the PVR2 is the latest edition of um, recording uh, software, especially for consoles like the Xbox and PlayStation 3. Uh, mainly for the Xbox because it, can sub it has no um, limitations in recording um, HDMI. I'm sure you can get unboxing videos and whatnot uh, online um, and actually on how to connect it and everything. I just wanted to show you my setup and I want to especially give you my render settings and everything on Vegas um, and how it records and how it performs. So first of all I'm just going to quickly look at the connections uh, and something which quite intrigued me. Um, as you can see here you've got HDMI in and you've got HDMI out. HDMI in going to your Xbox 360 therefore that goes to my Xbox there and this goes to my screen over there. You've got your USB cable which is connected to your computer. One thing you should really note is that initially when I did the setup I put it in a USB 3.0 um, um, slot. It is specified 2.0 but I thought it would be backwards compatible on my on my motherboard but obviously not. Put it on a 2.0 um, slots and make sure it is connected. If your uh, if it doesn't register uh, or your Xbox doesn't play whilst you connect it, restart your computer and then your Xbox should show on your monitor. And then you've got the power cable. So basically, it's got some nice lights over here, so you can see blue is on standby. What I'm going to do uh, right now is switch on my Xbox, which has Battlefield 3 inside. So um, one thing I actually want to mention is actually the sound. Now all of you know that HDMI transfers both vision and sound so therefore anything going there will go to your monitor. However as you can see my monitor does not have any speakers and I've got external speakers. What's quite interesting and one thing I never knew is that the Xbox 360 at least, um, I, I'm not sure about the PS3, has got optical out and I know optical is for sound, but I never knew that um, if I had the connection via HDMI and the optical, would the HDMI be transferring sound or not? Simply because you know the sound is being routed via somewhere else. Well, I can confirm that it does. Therefore, you can have your setup like this, and therefore video and sound is being recorded and being sent to the screen. However, you can also have your optical connection on your Xbox and that will allow you to have sound going to your speakers um, and sound will still be recorded via your HD PVR2. So right now, as you can see, the Xbox is on. Um, what I'm going to do is just show you that the Xbox is actually running. Um, should be on the Battlefield 3 screen. There you go. As you can see, so it's currently playing. Uh, you can see it's connected to the PVR2 and it's um, right there on Battlefield 3. So what's quite interesting over here is um, the actual button, the physical button. There's a physical button over here on the PVR2 which is very, very useful and I use that basically to record on and off. Uh, what I'm going to do is go back to my, mo uh, to my PC screen and show you when I hit that button it's gonna launch the software automatically so I'm gonna hit it now and there you go you can see it's launched the software it changes color to green to say an idle and when it goes green ring when it's got a green ring is when it's recording so just give it a little bit of time usually the first time it takes a little bit of time because it has to boot up the software basically but now as you can see that green color right there it is recording everything right there and there is lag as you can see from the uh, what you can see on the screen and what's actually being played but that does not mean you'll have any sort of input lag on your Xbox 360. This is a common misconception when people look at the PVR2 uh, or the PVR1. Um, they get confused what input lag is and what this lag is. This lag that you can see over here is about a two or three second um, de delay between what's being displayed on your Xbox right now and what's showing on your PC monitor. However, the actual input lag is related to if I have my PVR2, is it going to inf um, affect my actual gaming performance when I'm actually gaming on the screen, as in not via the PC right there, not that PC screen? And no, it's not. The, the, the milliseconds, it's so, it's so small that you won't even notice it. I mean, put it that way. Um, you'd need machines to test how many micro milliseconds are being lost uh, for you using an external device. Anyway. The recording is quite good and very easy. As you can see, if I want to stop, I hit the button again. As you can see, it's stopped right there and it's green saying it's on um, just thinking. And when it goes to blue, it's ready to re-record again. 
The files are saved um, somewhere, or somewhere rather, you can actually choose where to put them. Uh, for me, I've got a specific folder on my external hard drive, which I call HDPVR2. And here you can see I've got various recordings. The beauty of these recordings um, is that the file size is actually quite small. So let's just take, for example, this one. It's a 12 minute recording. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see. If not, let me just bring you closer. It's a 12 minute recording and it's only 1.26 gigabytes and this is recording at full 1080p um, and it's only 1.26 gigabytes. Now, I say only just simply because if you've ever recorded fraps on the PC you'll understand that for 12 minutes of footage 1.26 gigabytes is nothing. Usually with fraps recording you're looking at about 30 to 40 gigabytes for that same duration of time. So the quality is great and the recording size is pretty small. Right now I'm going to go transfer um, the camera to the PC and show you my render settings, format settings and everything like that that you'll need to know or want to know when setting up your PVR2. Right, so I'll hit you guys up in just a bit. Hey guys, so I'm back and here is uh, my desktop as you can see. So as you can see I was on this screen, I've got my PVR2 recordings and whatnot. So what I'm going to show you are two important things. First of all is the ARC. Um, I think it's the ArcSoft Showbiz um, format settings and device settings. So what you want to do is make sure the video input and uh, uh, audio input is HDMI. So that's the HDMI input um, right there. So if we click on device settings, you don't really want to change anything over here. This is the default that I've got and this is the default that I got from uh, the factory. So as you can see, uh, NTSCM and everything like that and here are all the brightness and things. You don't have to touch any of these. The format settings are the important ones and here are the ones that I have actually changed. So you can see everything over here, You can it's quite useful because you can um, you can change the um, resolution, um, you can downscale it, you can change the frame rate and whatnot. But what I've done is left it at source and that's what you get by default. The video encoder, I've put it to high, I think that's the default uh, level, I think it's 4, I think that's again the default. The only thing I've changed I think is the audio to 256 and uh, 48 and 44.1. So that's the difference there. Video encoder is this is another thing that I've changed is the bit rate and peak bit rate. I go to 14. Um, basically, it's max, and I have it on constant. Now, some people say variable. I've left it on constant and not had a single problem right there. Um, digital noise reduction. Don't have to check that. Don't have to check that. Audio properties. So as you can see, I had 256 before, so I've put it on 256 over here. My audio sampling rate is 48. Uh, 48k uh, video properties here's another thing so you want to have it on constant and 14,000 um, and I've got uh, B frames at 3 so this is the settings I have got now some people might say B frames 4 they might say variable bit rate they might ask you to change stuff long story short try and see what's best for you for me this is seems to have been quite a good setting uh, to have so now you'll be able to see uh, the Battlefield 3 screen will come up soon. It's just loading up. When you change format settings, it does kind of refresh. So as you can see, I'm on 1920 times 1080, so therefore 1080p. I'm on a current encoding bitrate of 14 megabytes, and I'm doing AAC two channels right there, uh, and I'm recording in MP4. Now MP4, M2TS used to be the one for PVR1. I'm using MP4 for PVR2. I've got hardware acceleration ticked. I've got it where I'm saving it to and save for my mp4 here is the sound that you can hear on the, your pc if you want it enabled or disabled that won't affect your um, actual recordings as in if you if you do that and record uh, you'll still have sound it's just this is for listening on the pc or not so that's my uh, pvr2 settings i can close that i can actually switch off my xbox don't need that anymore Right, and now the important one is Vegas. So as you can see here, hopefully you can see that I've got a recording. I was doing some crossbow footage uh, just not long ago, um, and I've left um, the project over here. First and foremost is your project properties. What you want to make sure is you've got 1920 times 1080 over here. I've got none um, for field order. Uh, pixel uh, aspect ratio is 1.0. 32-bit full range uh, floating point double NTSC, so 59.940, uh, full resolution quality best, Gaussian and deinterlaced de none, audio, I've got 48,000, bit depth 24, resample 
best. So there we go. That's everything that I've got in my projects, uh, project settings, which are quite important. Project settings basically mean what you're getting inputted is what you want over here, and that's basically what it is. Now, um, there's two other things I should mention before getting to the render settings. Is um, if you if you've ever owned the PVR one, you would know that there used to be a little line at the cross a bottom, um, really small line, and Similarly, in the PVR2, we have got a small line. As you can see, I've got the event pan and crop as PVR, uh, PVR1, uh, PVR2. Sorry, on the right over here is basically what's being cropped. If you can see, bang, there you go. Now I'm going to zoom in for you guys to see. Hopefully, you'll be able to see this um, a little better. But basically, there's a really small black line over here. It's very small. Uh, in fact, it won't be really noticeable, but if you're a little bit picky, a bit like me, then you can just crop that out and save that in your event pan and crop uh, profiles right there. Um, another thing that I should say is that um, when you right click uh, on the clip, I highly suggest to disable resample because if you have smart resample, the video is very choppy and very, very blurry. So I highly, highly suggest doing disable resample for all your clips. Um, so do that. And of course, you can do your video effects. The only effects that I really have done is sharpen. Apart from that, I don't really use anything else. So as you can see, you can use the color corrector but for the recent maps on Battlefield 3 it is pretty bad uh, the coloring is really vivid so I, I leave the coloring off the color is actually very good and doesn't actually need really adjusting so I quite like the coloring as it is so now for render settings so render as so as you can see I've got main concept AVC dash AAC it's MP4 so as you remember I was recording an MP4 and therefore I am Outputting an MP4. So now some people might have WMV might be better and whatnot. I actually did quite extensive tests and actually found MP4 used actually gave the best results, especially with this writing. The writing was a little bit clearer. So MP4 for me is the is the choice. Again, play around with the settings, choose whichever you want, but these are my settings. So MP4. If I go custom, here is the things you want to do: custom frame frame size, 1920 by 1080. You don't want that ticked main the frame rate if you remember the double ntsc you want that similarly over here field order again like the project settings none pixel ash bake ratio i've got it one number of reference frames two and whatnot variable bit rate over here it's got constant bit rate in all honesty you can do constant bit rate and go for 14 14 uh, million over there um because that's what we had before so it's the same thing um audio uh, i've got forty eight thousand bit rate over there uh, you can change as well so it's a 256 would be preferable right there project is best so after you do that um, you can go ahead and render your file and you'll have a really nice um, video file um, I don't think my videos are finished rendering but I will link it down in the description and you'll be able to see the quality of the recording and whatnot. So I hope this video has helped you guys on your PVR2 settings. If you've got any questions feel free to ask them in the description below. Um, Alright guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Take care. Bye bye.